Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Damn, I always wanted to see that. So back in 2015 when virtual reality was this fresh new thing in tech and not commercially mainstream yet. I still remember how freaking captivated I was watching people like Jaza and Goro Fujita and many others do cool shit like sketch and paint and even freaking animate in thin air using VR. And ever since then I've had this dream to be able to draw and sketch in 3D. Sketching is the easiest freaking way to put your ideas across and being able to do that in thin air would just take it to a complete new level. So in my desperate attempts to feel like this, I tried purchasing one of these fancy little things back in college. But being a student at the time, the grades that I got and the money that I had was exactly the same. A few years later, I started learning Blender and came across this. And it immediately blew my mind. I was completely smitten away by all the amazing things that people were actually <coughs> doing with it. The dream that I had was once again reignited. But this damn thing was so freaking complicated that I literally procrastinated for months before finally forcing myself to sit and figure this damn thing out once and for all. And after binging a bunch of tutorials and experimenting with some simple projects, eventually it became less and less scary and started to make more sense. Well, it's been a while since I last posted something on this channel. As I wasn't quite sure about what sort of videos to work on next, I've been playing a lot with grease pencil these days, so I figured why not make a series sharing the way that I learned it. So here it goes. Buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. So there is this concept of big, medium and small in design, which is what we will be using to systematically break this big scary thing down into small and simple concepts that we can all easily understand. Starting with the big, the overview. Remember these four points. Number one, grease pencil is an object. Just like a cube, a cone or a donut, it's basically just an object. Point number two, like other objects in Blender, grease pencil also has its own modes. So edit, sculpt, draw, etc. Point number three, grease pencil has two ways of animating it. One is in the object mode, and other is in the draw mode. And finally, number four, there are layers and masks, just like any other 2D software. Now let's zoom in on the first two points a little bit, okay? Number one, grease pencil is an object, right? What does that even mean? It means it's basically a mesh made of points, edges, and faces. To add it, you go Shift A, grease pencil object, boom, easy. Also, like any other object, you can select it and freely move, scale, and rotate, and even keyframe it. Cool. Next up are the modes, which are these six little things. Now, most of these are similar to other objects like edit and sculpt mode and stuff, but this draw mode is what is exclusively special to a grease pencil object. Okay, so let's explore it. A draw mode. Now, how do how do you articulate this? It's basically like another layer or a dimension that's contained inside each grease pencil object. So imagine a 2D canvas on which you can draw. And this canvas can be freely moved and rotated anywhere in the 3D space. Alright, now that's exactly what you're doing with a grease pencil object. If you click and flip this canvas thing over here on, you would see a grid pops up. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a canvas, or rather a representation of the canvas. Which is basically an infinite, invisible 2D plane on which you draw. And since this 2D plane exists in this 3D space, it means it has two things. A location, which is where the center of the canvas is located at the moment, and a rotation, which is basically the direction that the plane is facing, right? This handles the rotation, and this one handles the location. Right now, it's located at the origin and it's facing front. And these three, front, side, top, are pretty self-explanatory and hence kind of boring, right? But what would happen if I, for instance, click this? Now, the canvas tracks the camera, aka my view, and always faces towards me, right? To demonstrate this visually, let's just draw a bunch of rectangles from different angles and see what happens. Now you see what I meant by 
the rotation of the canvas. I hope this gives you a better idea of how this plane behaves in this view mode. Now let's move on to the location tab. 3D cursor. This seems interesting. Let's see what this does. Now previously the canvas was located at the origin, but now it snaps wherever I place the 3D cursor. Very useful. You might be wondering why the hell is there also a 3D cursor in this rotation tab? Let's find out. Turns out if you hit N and navigate to this 3D cursor section over here, you can then have very precise control over both the rotation and the location of the canvas. Pretty cool, right? If you thought that's cool, wait till you find out what this button does. Surface. First, let's find a surface to draw on. Great. Now, what surface does is it takes the canvas that was previously 2D and makes it 3D by, by wrapping it around any geometry in your scene. And if for some reason your lines are not clear or if they are a little off of the surface, go here and play with this offset thing. <laughs> Oh, and I almost forgot. Please don't use a friggin' mouse to draw. Get yourself a drawing tablet. Even the cheapest ones are still far better than a friggin' mouse. Now there is a curated list of some good budget tablets down in the description. If you would like to purchase one, you can check them out. These are affiliate links. You can use them if you would like to help the channel grow and support my broadcast. Why am I explaining? You guys know how these things work by now, right? Now, that being said, that's basically it about the draw mode. So yeah, until next time, peace. Oh wait, there's actually one more thing. So it's me from the future. And while editing this video, I discovered something really cool. There is also this stroke option in here, which I don't know why I always ignored it until now. But check this out. So I set this to stroke and the rotation to view and then applied a mirror modifier to this crease pencil object and then just randomly started to draw something, anything. And was actually surprised by what was happening. Now I'm not entirely sure about how this thing works but it seems like it's connecting the stroke points if you draw over them or even near them giving you these really sweet little curves and forms. And the best thing is that I don't even need to use any 3D cursor or to constantly move the canvas or to jump between edit mode and draw mode and all that stuff. I can just purely focus on drawing, you know, on making something. And I think it's great for prototyping and coming up with rough 3D design concepts, right? Like this little jet thing that literally took me just 10 minutes. I know it. You see the potential, right? So, anyway, just a happy little accident that I stumbled into. But I thought I'd share. If anyone knows more about this, please explain in the comments. Okay, now moving on to... What else? Damn, there's a lot. So there's animation, which is a chapter in itself. There's layers and masks, constructing in 3D and so much more. I won't even dare think about cramming them all in this one tiny little video. Besides, these topics deserve their own dedicated videos. Let's see if this episode works. And if there is enough demand for this kind of stuff, then I would love to flesh it out further as a series, maybe. So let's set a goal. Part 2 drops at 10k subs. So make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. Alright, until next time.